Hey guys, this is Post Production Pi, and welcome to part 10, the final part of our professional Photoshop portrait retouching series on srlounge.com. If you guys have made it this far, congratulations. You guys are one step closer to being Photoshop masters, at least as far as retouch and photography goes. So great job. All we're going to do in this tutorial, it's fairly simple. We're just going to add a little bit of additional color uh, and just kind of get that final tone and, and color to our image. So let's do it right now. Let's uh, take all the layers that we did before. We're going to merge everything on a new layer by selecting this top layer, hitting Alt, Control, Shift, E. Again, we're going to rename this to, we'll call it Final, oh, actually we've got to call it Part 10, Final Colors. Now, what we're going to do here is we, I want to basically make her lips and her hair really pop. Now, you can also tweak her eyes a little bit if you want to get a little more saturation out of her eyes. A lot of you are going to say, okay, well, her eyes look too devilish if they're more saturated, so I'm going to leave that up to you guys. Eyes are very, you know, if you go too far, they look kind of crazy. You don't go enough, they don't pop enough. It's a very fine line, and you guys have to draw your own line. There's obviously a wrong way to do it, but there's a lot of right ways anyway. So what we're going to do now is we're going to add an adjustment layer. What I'm first going to do is add a vibrance adjustment layer. All right, now what we're going to do is basically zoom in a little bit, and we're going to adjust the saturation to the point where I want the hair and where I want the lips. I'm not going to worry about anything else. So let's just uh, worry about kind of the areas that we want to increase the saturation on. And at about, we'll say at about 25, I get a nice red in the lips, and I get a nice golden glow in the hair, and I really like that look right there. If I want to enhance the lips even further, darken them, whatever, I can add a hue saturation layer and pump them up, but I think this is good where it's at. Now, with the mask selected, I'm going to hit Control plus I or Command I on a Mac, and we're going to start painting in where we actually want to reveal this color enhancement. All right, so let's invert our colors by hitting X. I'm going to increase the brush size with my bracketing, and we're just going to paint over, make sure all of my opacity flow is on normal or on 100%, and we're just going to paint over the hair layer to add back in that color. And you can see how it's just kind of making the hair pop. We want to be careful not to cover any areas of the skin, in particular areas of the skin that have shadows, because it's going to be even more noticeable that the uh, colors have been kind of crazified over those areas. So let's just make sure we hit the hair only, and just kind of be careful as we're going over it. Again, you can hit backslash if you want to see the mask while you're painting it in. We're fine with getting it close, and what we'll do is just kind of tweak that edge of the skin just to make sure it's not covering any skin. Uh, let's kind of hit X and paint out this area, and then we're just going to paint out. We're going to zoom in, uh, just paint out the areas of the, the skin where we don't want these adjustments. It's important that it's okay if the hair fades a, a little bit in color when it gets close to the skin. That's less important than, uh, than making sure the skin doesn't change colors because that's going to be really, really noticeable. So be really careful about that. Okay. I think that looks pretty good where it's at. We're going to mask out the lips because we don't want the lips to be, or we do want the lips to uh, actually have boosted colors. Again, we can, uh, you can make your life easier and actually just switch the hardness right now while you're doing this. Or you could be like me and paint it in and then retouch it a second later. So. I'm going to now switch the hardness up a little bit higher. We're going to switch to black, and we're going to paint back just over that edge where I don't want the uh, saturation to appear. By the way, again, if you have a Wacom tablet, it really pays off in situations like this. I'm still using my mouse because my tablet is actually in the office right now. All right, let's hit backslash to see where we what we got so far. That looks about right. I don't see, let me just zoom in, I don't see any areas of the skin that look uh, strange. Let me just make sure I'm going to paint over this area just to make sure none of that area is covered. I think we're good. All right. Now, this is where I would say if you want, you can make the eyes more saturated. Otherwise, you know, it, it's really up to you. But uh, well, let's just do it just for the sake of doing it. We'll paint in the eyes just so we have a little more saturation in the eyes. What we're going to do now is we're going to do a reverse saturation, which is going to pull out a lot of the saturation in the image, and then we're going to add a little bit back in. I'm holding Alt and clicking on the mask just to bring up the mask just so I can kind of clean up any splotchiness that I have, like in the hair and stuff like that, which you can see by those spots. All right, I'm going to hit 0 to go back to a full screen, 
And now we're going to add one more vibrance layer. And this time what we're going to do is we're going to do a little reverse vibrance, reverse saturation, where we kind of pull out some of the color tones and enhance some of the remaining color tones. And that's why we created this first vibrance layer, because we want to kind of make those areas that we want to pop, pop first, and then we're going to pull some of the colors out now. So let's add the second vibrance layer. In this layer, I'm going to pull my vibrance down to, say, negative 15, just to kind of mute some of the other colors. And then we're going to bring our saturation up to around, let's say, 10. That looks about right where it's at. Uh, I like the look of it. You guys can adjust it how you guys, however you guys want. If you guys feel like her eyes are too colorful right now, like they're too fiery, uh, whatever, that's fine. Just go back to your vibrance layer, uh, click on Alt on the mask, and then go to black and just mask it back out. Uh, you know, this is really up to you guys how you guys want it to look. With eyes, there's obviously a point where you can go too far, and it's easy to go too far. But there's also a point where it looks good, and it's just really about your preference. And you'll notice that in a lot of magazines, especially fashion and stuff like that, they actually go pretty gnarly on the eyes. If you look really closely, you can see that the eyes are pretty crazy. So anyway, I like this the way it is right now. I love the colors. I love the tone, the way the hair pops, the lips pop, uh, the eyes just the way they are. I'm going to select the Vibrance Layer 2. We're going to select Part 10, that layer, and we're going to hit Control G to group it. Double click, and we we'll call it Part 10. Final color adjustment. And that's great, guys. You guys have finished the professional Photoshop portrait retouching series. You guys are one step closer to being Photoshop masters, especially when it comes to retouching and photography. So let's check out where we started from. Here is our original. We're going to hold Alt and click on the visibility to see only that layer. And we're going to click it one more time, holding Alt to see where we're at. So before and after. All right, guys. So great job. Hope you guys enjoyed.